driving us crazy. And he's like, you, you might have passed up a world record. Hunting is what I do. It's what I am. It's what we are. It's in our blood. Always has been. Always will be. Welcome to season eight. Down, buddy. Thank you, thank you guys. I appreciate it. I'm speechless. Alright, well, there it is. Brennan's out shooting the bow. He's getting packed up, ready to take off. To Africa again, trip seven. Alright, we're gonna fling a few arrows. Pressure's on. <laughs> Good. Good to go. So basically we're just gonna cut right, there's not gonna be any airport footage or anything like that. Because we had so much footage here, we decided we might as well show each and every one of you exactly what we saw here at Dare to Bow Hunt. How are you doing? Good idea, love Jason. Jason. Hey, Neil. I'm Roy. We got How are you doing? Good to you. Uh, first afternoon when we arrived, Lammy said, you know, put your bows together, take a couple shots, make sure everything's still still on, and let's get out hunting. So we decided that the first animal we were gonna kind of target was uh, Nyala, which I personally have been, have been wanting to hunt in Nyala for forever. And here at Dare to Bull Hunt, they pride themselves as a giant Nyala. And we saw lots of Nyala during the week, but so we got into this blind, it was kind of, a, it was kind of dug into the ground, kind of a bunker style blind and again we're overlooking waterhole uh, which is pretty cool the the waterhole was you know 14 18 yards from front to back and um, you know I never really hunted this way before in Africa the, the past hunts we did were, were you know rifle hunts and when we did bow hunt it was it was spot and stock and you know you're we stocking up I wanted to do this hunt more to have the animals come close, kind of like what we do with whitetails, you know, when we're bow hunting at home. So, uh, uh, you know, when we when we started talking to Lammy and Allison at Dare to Bow Hunt, it was, you know, they made it quite adamant that we'd be hunting out of blinds and there'd be close animals and and um, you know, just seeing the animals do their thing in their natural environment was it, it was going to be pretty cool. So we got hunkered in there and I don't know a few if we had a few animals come, some warthog and. One cool little red diker that I never really seen a red diker before, and and Lamy, uh, you know, as this as this week goes on, you'll you'll see that we we get more into them. But it was I don't know probably an hour before uh, before light was fading, and, and uh, Lamy says there's a there's a bush buck uh, 
a female bush buck at the water. And uh, Lammy had a trail camera there and he said, you know, there's, there's been a few pretty good bush bucks around. Uh, and the next thing we know, this, this male, a good one, real wide, just comes walking into frame right by the blind. And our Nyala hunt turned into a bush buck hunt real quick. This season of Hunting Canada and Beyond TV is brought to you by Excalibur Crossbow, the world's most accurate crossbow, guaranteed. Ozonix, in the field ozone generator. Scott Archery. Spy Point, get the point, get Spy Point. The Beretta family of firearms. CBE bow sights, summit tree scouts, and by Elite Archery, respect the game. For Hunting Canada Beyond news, updates, and contests, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and menoutdoors.com. I wasn't even really here to, to hunt bushbuck. I, I mean, I've killed a couple before. Um, but Lammy said, well, that's a good one, and he's right there, so he took the shot. Oh, that's a big bush buck. Really big bush buck. still floating in the creek. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't very far, was he? Oh yeah, a lot of right there. Look at that, washed off, ready to go again. <laughs> What a heck of a bush buck. I mean, when, when you said that there's, there's a male with that female, and I looked out of the blind, I went, holy, that, that's what, he's just un, like he's way he's wider. Unbelievable. Than, yeah. it's, uh, you know, it's, it looks easy now, but I can't tell you, we've seen this particular male probably twice this year, and to get him into water. Yeah, I think that female I brought, brought him in. Yeah. She looked like she was on the heat of something. Yeah. And that was his demise. But the sun's setting on the first day, so I guess we'll take a few pictures and get them loaded up. And Excellent. I appreciate everything. Good I, had a, anyway. I had a great time. You know, we're still kind of jet lagged and just kind of beat down. Had a great sleep. Uh, the lodge here is fantastic. Great sleeping quarters. The food is unbelievable. Uh, I mean, every meal we had is just unbelievable food. Just like anywhere in Africa, but they treat you good here. You know, they only, we only had seven hunters here this week and, and uh, a lot of other camps I've been to, you know, they you know, take 20, 30 hunters a week and it's a very small, personalized and, and you know, a great camp. I, I knew that right off the bat the first couple days. So the next day we decided, you know, let's concentrate on this Inyala. So we went back to the same blind because Lammy did have some great Inyala bulls on the on the trail camera again. And, and just like we use them at home for whitetails, you know, whatever's on the camera, you better go hunt that spot. And sure enough, mid-morning, there it was, a great Inyala bull. He come into the water really spooky, but you know, what a beautiful animal and, uh, and a great bull at that.
in through there. Yeah, that's pretty cool. They are a beautiful animal. Yeah, they fell right in a bone pile yeah. or something. Yeah, could have died yeah, oh, yeah. three years ago. Huh. They're super pretty. Okay. Before we go to commercial break here, let's take a look at some of the, the bird life we've seen at these water holes over, over the first seven days of hunting. The, the birds are, it's just unbelievable to sit there and see the amount of different colorful birds at these water holes. We'll be right back. After we seen that first red diker, I think it was the first or second day, uh, the first day it was, um, you know, Lammy said, do you want a real challenge? And uh, absolutely. So cameraman Brennan and Arnett and uh, I, you know, absolutely we're up for a challenge. Boy, what is it? And, and he says, it, you should try to take a red diker with a bone arrow. It's very, very hard. They're very elusive and there's not a lot of them. So we're heading to another new blind today. Try for uh, Warthog, Impala, and Red Diker. All rungered into this blind here. We're gonna wait for Red Diker. And then if nothing comes, we're gonna move. Yeah, yeah. Try for Impala. It's kind of a cool little spot. You know, Brendan had his bow too, and we had a few opportunities. He had a great impala come, and he just couldn't get the shot. And that's just the way it is at the water holes. You know, the animals just don't come screaming in and you shoot them. I mean, these things are spooky. They know that coming to water, whether it's these water holes or any water hole, it means danger. There, there's cats around and, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that, that kill these animals, especially when you're talking about a 12 pound rabbit sized red diker. And so I said to Lammy, I said, well, what's a good one? He said, well, a good one's about the horns are about two and a half inches, but you can't really see them, he said, because they got a big tuft of hair on the top. And I, I kind of, I didn't know what to think, but so Brent and I sat there the first day, um, I think Neil sat with us. We did see one, a shooter, um, and thank God Neil was there, because he, you know, he said, that's a shooter, but we just couldn't get a shot at it. Uh, day two, we sat there, we seen like seven or eight red dikers, um, some right in front of the blind, um, just couldn't get the job done and again we're we're also hunting targets of opportunity you know I mean we had some pigs come in Brandon wanted to take a pig we just couldn't get it done finally on day three after sitting for 30 some hours in that blind we'd sit from daylight to dark yeah I thought yeah what can a 20 pound animal do but it's just absolutely driving us crazy every day we had a red the red diker we had the opportunity the first day at. Uh, he come in and Lammy said the best shot on them is when they're drinking because they, they jump the string so bad. Uh, these things are on pins and needles. He said the best shot is when they're, when they're drinking to shoot them straight on. That way if they jump, you know, you're, you're still going to hit vitals rather than broadside when they, when they dock the, the arrow. And I mean, he said, you know, you're going to at 20, 22 yards, you're going to have to hit a golf ball. Yes. Oh, we've been waiting here three days for that shot. Oh my God. Oh, that is a monster, isn't it? I don't know what a monster is, but we passed a few up. We passed that one up yesterday. So we 
we didn't know we showed Lammy. And he's like, you, you might have passed up a world record. This segment brought to you by Excalibur Crossbow, the world's most accurate crossbow, guaranteed. up on a little mound here they're sure not very big and, and you were telling me before this is kind of the only area that you can kind this, of hunt them? this is the only area from a little bit south from here all the way up to Mozambique and then they change into Pete's Diker or whatever the case is but yeah in South Africa this is the prime 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 spot and that's why I wanted you guys to have one or try for one yeah and try you did yeah and uh, that's why you don't see so many in the books they are tough and even get. like the kill, you know, you go over it over in your head, but until you actually see one or touch one, you don't really know how small they actually exactly. are. Exactly. And they are super string jumpers. So yeah. you took the best shot on this one and that was face on. Yeah. It's excellent. And the result is here to speak for itself, but this is a beautiful male. I will. Yeah, really they nice. are. They're super pretty. Like uh, the camera probably doesn't even do this thing justice, but they are so pretty. Uh, not many people shoot them on yeah. the boat. Just not because they're not around, it's just so tough yeah. to get on top of them. This is an excellent one. But Good job, Jeff. Yeah, I mean, excellent. I appreciate it. And I didn't really know what I got until we got back to camp and all the pHs are, whoa, 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 they're, you know, it's, you know, top 10 with the bow all the time. Now, after I've hunted for however many days and we've had some opportunities, Brennan, I mean, he's sat behind the camera, he's had his bow, he's had his bow in his hand, but he just couldn't get just uh, could never get the shot. So uh, we just, I decided I'm just gonna leave my bow at home or back at camp and it's time for Brennan to hunt. So we went back to the same spot where I killed my bush buck and the Inyala and late mid afternoon, another great Inyala come in and Brennan took his first a African animal and was, made a great shot and it went down right on camera. It was, it was perfect. These things are gorgeous. You know, we went to recover Brendan's Nyala. Lammy brought his daughter Jenna along. Pretty, pretty special. Again, on the very last day, he says, uh, looks out the window and he says, here come a couple uh, small Nyala bulls. And so they come in and they're watering. And he's like, I wonder if Kudu would follow them in. And th th these bulls are looking back, looking back, looking back. And he, he peeks out the window again and there's a great big, great big kudu coming right into the water just a phenomenal sight at you know 18 yards just unbelievable so he makes a great shot on the on the uh, big old kudu and he runs off we trail them out and find them. Just a just a great hunt. <laughs> the joys of an outfitter, hey. <laughs> Especially when you, you leave two North American boys all by themselves in this. Four o'clock last day. <laughs> what do you think? This is an amazing animal. Thank you very much. Pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think it was gonna happen, but it did. Man, he's heavy too. If you're looking to bull hunt, you, you know, give Lammy and Allison a, a, a look at their website. It's right here below, and uh, or, or give me a call, and I'll I'll fill you in on all the all the details. And I highly recommend this place. It's it's I've been to Africa seven times, and it's one of the better or the best camp I've been to. So. 
Hope you enjoyed the show. See you next week. For Hunting Canada and Beyond Gear and Apparel, go to CanadianHuntShop.com. Track and Trail Adventures, Worldwide Hunting, any hunt, anywhere. We will make your dreams become reality. Our tradition that grows with